Hi, I'm Chris Davey. I'm the uh, VP and General Manager for the API Management and Integration Business Unit of WSO2. And I'm here with uh, Srinath, and he's the author of Streaming Cloud Native App Development in Kubernetes with Prioritized API Management, uh, an article he wrote a while back. And we're just going to uh, do a bit of a deep dive into uh, some questions around that. So, hi, Srinath. Hi, Chris. Do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, yes, sure. Yeah. So, um, I, I have been with WSO2 for, I think, almost... 14 years now. Uh, so I come from open source background. Uh, so I work with uh, so WSDL, a lot of the earlier set of specifications, then a lot with the service oriented architecture, distributed systems, etc. Uh, so currently work as the chief architect at WSO2. Cool. Okay, let's uh, let's dive into some some questions then. So you know, in this article. Um, you talk a lot about API management, and I just want to sort of kick off with a with a simple one of, you know, why do organizations need or care about API management? It's, you know, relatively easy to expose APIs through uh, basic proxies or through the firewall, but what why is API management important? Uh, so, so what we, so, okay, this is the requirement, right? Requirement is you have some service, usually a service run inside your, system inside the firewall you want somebody outside to get access to it so this outside may be uh, another somebody in the internet like your customer your partner or somebody in a different team in your within your organization so the, either way yes uh, as uh, as you said chris it's pretty easy to open up the firewall and let them access it. But there are a lot of other problems comes around it. Like for example, okay, who are the users? Who can use it? How much? Uh, how hard they hit it? Like, do you have to throttle? Uh, do, do you need stats? Do you need to monetize? So there's like, although it looks simple, there's a lot of other things you will have to solve. Now, of course, you can solve all those things, but it's a lot of work. Uh, so very often you are better off with the API management tool, which thought through those cases has solved. And uh, typically, if you do it yourself, you will spend more and you will have a lot of complexity. So cool. Okay, so you're talking about API management in the realm of Kubernetes. Um, is it any different? And can't we just use the same sort of tools and, and, and gateways that we normally do? Uh, I mean, you could, uh, but let me... So, so okay. typically, in non-Kubernetes setup, if I do API, API management, I'll get API management framework, I have it running, I'll have a gateway, I'll talk to that API management framework and tell I have a API like this, this how it look like, this the spec look like, this how security look like, all those things, you basically directly talk and set it up and manage. This the this the way we usually work, right? But the Kubernetes actually give you more because the the reason you would go to kubernetes is this idea of a declarative nature of kubernetes and the with kubernetes you uh, what you do is if you want a system you you tell kubernetes i want a system that look like this we do it with yaml you say i need these three machine three nodes they are in these things and this thing can have five replicas. This can have two replicas. They shouldn't fail. They talk to each other like this. This this person, this node can talk to that guy, but not those things. But you don't, 
you don't do this right like you don't write code to do this you just tell what you want kubernetes almost magically make it happen right so yeah at least that's the promise and of course it it do most of it i mean yeah. there are right cases so you'll get a, a crash loop etc but uh, uh, but we know how to handle those right exactly yeah. now with the apis now let's say i'm building an app which has say five services and few other things and api everything else i can describe through this yaml and tell the communities those will happen but not the apis apis it will be like oh i i go and tell um, i want a api gateway so i'll describe in yaml put in a start api gateway now i have to go and talk to it and configure it so the now kubernetes with the yaml now the big advantage is gitops right everything i want it's on scripts or in configurations magic it happens and if i want to recreate it just copy the thing and say redo now moment you have apis and you have to go to the this gateways and like play with it what happens is oh that's like another magic thing a human or another script has to do so it break up this nice uh, so kubernetes give you these nice things right so the gitops the this declarative nature and others you lose most of it or add like friction into it uh, if you can't do the apis in the kubernetes way too right cool that that makes it really clear so Within Kubernetes, this you've got the um, um, more recent sort of Kubernetes Gateway API specification. Now, we already had uh, the Open, a open API specification, and there's other um, specifications for APIs like RAML, etc. But why? What? What is the Kubernetes Gateway API specification exactly? So the Open API specification basically tell how the api look like for the consumer point of view i am the consumer using those api how that should look like but there are more details that you need to deploy it at the deployment side that that information is not there on the open api specification and the kubernetes gateway spec describe those at least most of it there are i mean it doesn't handle everything yet because there's but those are supposed to be handled through extension points so not everything but but the most of the major things get a api spec handles cool so the in the in the article you sort of mentioned interoperability or between sort of gateways federation um why would someone want that why why having this api standard so i get it within kubernetes but you know we've got lots of different api uh, gateways out there why would interoperability be a good thing so uh, okay so so i mean there are many players here there's many perspectives but if i am organization who want to basically run a business right and i need it infrastructure for doing this uh, my ideal world is that if there's a better thing i just switch uh, so it's like um, it's a little bit like uh, let's say let's say a phone right i mean there's a better phone i would like to switch uh, i mean it's it's not that easy right even with the phone not that easy that's like uh, um, i mean there are there are things that depend on it if i go into and from uh, apple to android okay i had to reset things right so so the same i mean it's same with the, i mean this much harder on the enterprise well because these things are much tighter so as a, as a business who trying to run these systems if there's a better thing around i would like to switch in the ideal world i just switch and it works uh, so that i mean that's kind of the dream right. uh, so that's i mean that's why we want it yeah 
<coughs> so it's great for organizations, but um, obviously there's lots of different vendors who produce API gateways. Um, what sort of, uh, why would vendors adopt, want to adopt this specification when they're sort of designing their gateways and their API management platforms? Um, what's, the, what's the benefit there? So, so it's a, I think it's a very, very com complex temperature dynamics that going on. Uh, now, at very simple base level, uh, the vendors actually wouldn't like it uh, because then your customers can move away easily, right? So that's the that's the first level. But there's there's a bit more under the structure. There's a bit more, right? Uh, so in one level, if you take a market, usually there's a leader, and there are there are usually there's a leader that may play a have a bigger part of the market, but then there are a lot of other players. Now, you, if you are the second, third, fourth, you would like interoperability because then <laughs> get them off. If you are the leader, usually you won't like interoperability. I mean, you see this happening. Um, I mean, I won't name names, but if you look at the other market, you will see. Usually the second, third would like the interoperability, then you can get them to switch. Uh, and yeah. then also there is this, uh, if you are like very competitive or you are, uh, you are much safer or rather maybe your thing is faster, better user experience, etc. Then you would like the interoperability because anyway you are going to win, make it easy for them to come to me. So, all these, it's all these are on, and then I mean, to be honest, there is another side as well, especially in the enterprise market. The organizations has a lot of say, the customers, right? Especially the big customers. If you if you pay a lot of money to the vendors, you get a voice, and you can demand, right? You can say, I want that, and if enough of them are saying that. Vendors will listen, and analysts can play a role too because if the analysts say that this is very important, and if a lot of organizations say yes, unless you have this and we are not going to take it, it will put the pressure. So it's a complex dynamics, but but I think there's there's enough like pressures for it to happen. Yeah, are we seeing? Um, a good adoption of the spec so far, from your perspective. Yeah, I, I mean, I, it's, it's not like it haven't become like a household name yet. But I think the initial response, the interest is, um, is promising. Good. So, what does that look like in the future? So, assuming we get a general adoption, people like the idea of interoperability. I know we've done some other articles saying, you know, gateways are becoming more commodity anyway, and it's the lifecycle management that's the the key focus. But what does what does that look like in the in the future um, if we, you know, adopt uh, if this is widely adopted in the in the space? What does that enable um, people to do? Uh, so I mean the the. Ide ideal goal is that interoperability, right? Because the, then I describe what I want, how my API look like. I can switch it, but the, with different gateway implemented, I can basically switch the vendor, right? So if there's faster one, I can switch, etc. That that's the ideal way. Uh, but uh, that won't happen. I'm now I'm talking from like what I had seen from at. With SOAP, with WSDL, there's a lot of specs, right? Uh, because, uh, because when you try to do a spec, the problem is that uh, there are a lot of uh, there are a lot of potential users of that spec, and their interests are not the same. Uh, so the so the what everybody most the people so if you are if you are on a committee that drafting the spec. Now, there are parts that a lot of people agree, you can put that into the main spec, but then there are like this lot of things 
that's very important for some and i mean it's like some for this industry they need it but uh, but not for so those usually become extensions and then i mean what would happen is that when they would differentiate based on the extensions there will be new features so that means that ideal world of that i can just oh nice thing cheaper switch that won't happen uh, i mean it can happen to some level if you are doing the simple things yes you can do that but if you what what usually happen is that as a business your requirements also get more and more complicated you want more things uh, so that uh, that that ideal state won't happen uh, but in my opinion it will be much better state than now because at uh, with, even with the extensions although it's bit you it's not fully just plug and play and the new thing but the, if you have to move amount of work you have to do is less so it is much better than the while well like while west where it's just everybody using complete different things right uh, i mean when you look at json when you look at http we we see that dynamic had work well and as an industry and as technology these specs has help us get into a better place cool um so obviously this is really just focused around the sort of the kubernetes space making the the setup of uh, APIs within the Kubernetes space a lot easier and more standardized. And uh, that's great. So do you think there's any chance this will extend outside of the Kubernetes space? Because obviously, I know a lot of people are moving towards cloud native and containerization, but there's still quite a few people in more traditional architectures and deployments that are using API management. So what, what's your thoughts on on that? So what, what I had seen is that a lot of new projects go in Kubernetes direction more and more. And so, so, and then usually if, if I'm a vendor, if I'm somebody who's trying to build tools, I am, my focus is on the new, where the new projects are. So that I think a lot of current interest is to make it work for Kubernetes. Now, if you are talking in theory, in technology point of view, uh, there's nothing stopping taking this spec and make it work on the on-premise thing. I mean, there are a few things that may not work, but a lot of concepts, I can make it work. But uh, the motivation for doing that is not that clear right now, I think. I, I don't see that it'll it's working on on premise right now right now but things could change right uh, but i think we had to prove that at the communist level and have a few big wins and have the adoption maybe we see it at the other end as well brilliant i think that's all I've got today. Thank you very much, Trina. That was really interesting. And obviously, if anyone wants to, you can go and uh, read the article on uh, on our website at wso2.com. But um, thank you very much. Thanks. Chris.